Louis Vuitton Felicia Pochette. Is it worth it? Here's my first impressions of the Felicia Pochette. It is made out of epi leather. It's a little too plasticky for my taste. I love minimally finished leathers, but definitely this is not it. It sounds like, looks like, and touches like plastic. Outside of that, um, the stitches are really good, all in line, craftsmanship, the edge paint is pretty good. The accessories feel good. Inner lining, it's fabric, it says, and it's a nice looking and feeling fabric. It comes with two inserts, one zipper pouch with same epi leather, and one credit card wallet kind of stuff with a different leather. This has the Safiano-ish pattern on it, but we're gonna see if it's really leather or not. The label says it's made out of Laqueta leather outside, inside is man-made fabric. Accessories feel good, but we're gonna cut into all of this and see how they're made. support materials to keep it warm. And this is what we have. Here's our leather here. Okay, inner lining, really good quality fabric and support materials. And here's your chip, probably the code for the product as well, for authentication purposes, by the way. So it seems like it's a fairly simple design, um, consists of um, three pieces of leather. <coughs> very clever design, or very nicely engineered, I would say. As far as my experience shows so far from Chanel and Louis Vuitton, the ones made in France looks much neater and much well crafted in comparison to the ones that are made in Spain or, or Italy. From these brands. I don't know why. Open the zipper pouch. The inner lining looks like leather, but it's not, which is normal. Inner linings are usually made out of these kind of materials. And yes, this pouch is made with same leather. Now, see this one, this is a different looking material outside now. It has a Sofiano finish kind of feel to it. Let's apply acetone to see the finish on the epi leather. Let's leave it for a minute. This is heavy. As we already knew, this is a very thick layer of film on this finish. It's a heavy corrective finish on top of a top grain leather. How they do this is take the leather grain, buff it off a little bit to open the pore so the finish can um, attach to leather better by those loosened fibers. And then they spray or lay it on um, this acrylic or poly-based finish layer to create a thick film on top of the leather grain and then there are heavy hot presses with this pattern on it just goes in and gives this permanent form into that plastic layer 
what it does is close the leather grain, the pores completely. It protects the leather for a really long time. Your leather will be protected against water, all the elements on top. It's going to be very easy to clean. It will look very similar um, from day one to the day it gets really dry and cracks. But the downside of these heavy finishes, they although they're protective in the advantages side, they cut your connection to leather. They you, you don't get to see the leather, touch or feel the leather anymore. And if you are a leather enthusiast that enjoys that leather look, touch and feel, this is not something for you. This is just a high fashion standardized product underneath is leather. To be honest, you can use very low grades of leather to make such finishes. Nothing will be different on top because it's super corrective. It will forgive any kind of imperfection and mistake. So you can get a cheaper, readily available cowhide and apply this finish and get away with it. So probably these companies are not doing that. Um, brands like this, they use high grade cowhides to apply these finishes. But in my perspective, it's almost like buying a high grade steak and making a hot dog with it. You're kind of like wasting a resource um, by standardizing it way too much. And I understand the big brands need to go standardization and protection is an important feature they want to have on their products. Um, that's why they design these pieces. But for the understanding of the leather buyer, epi leather is, is a heavy finish. There is not much leatherness to enjoy in the sensory and feeling level. Is it leather? Yes, underneath it's a beautiful leather, um, but finish is going to get in your way of feeling it. If you're looking for easily cleanable piece that's going to look the same for a really long time, this is a perfect choice and you can't go wrong with it. But if you're looking for an authentic one of a kind piece that you're going to get to enjoy the natural look, authentic um, variations, imperfections, nope, this is not it. You may need to look some other leather types. So we're going to check the finish on the other type of leather in the pouch that comes inside. This kind of has a similar look pattern to the Sofiano from Prada. But I don't know what Louis Vuitton says to this one. It doesn't say on the labels because it was an insert in the main product. Yeah, it's it's very similar concept. Uh, there is a thick layer of uh, film protective finish with embossed pattern as you see we reach to the top grain leather side by removing this finish see a lot of green residues I'm a little bit confused with Louis Vuitton's label of Loqueta leather this is the third time it's coming out of um, Louis Vuitton products that I was inspecting it says Waketa leather on it, and Waketa leather in the industry is used for this natural vegetable tan leather. Sometimes they dye it, drum dye it, it could be colored, but completely vegetable tanned and very minimal or, or no finish at all on top. This is what they refer as Waketa leather. And the leathers that I was testing before, tested, showed signs of chrome usage, which is against that concept of vaqueta. Vaqueta is usually um, referred to that 100% vegetable tan leather. And as we see in this one as well, the green ash tells us there is a little bit of chrome usage in this leather and the way it burned also convinces me that this doesn't show the characteristics of full vegetable tan leather. Although I seen some Vagetta leathers in the industry there was a little bit of chrome involvement, although it's not supposed to be. I know Louis Vuitton uses a lot of Vagetta leathers in their most signature handbags, handles. You might be familiar with this color. Item we just dissected, the Epi leather Felicia Pochette was also coming with that Vagetta leather label. And that's why we burned it and we see this green residue again. Although it's not a conclusive test, it just gives us a good understanding of what might be involved here. And I emailed Louis Vuitton customer service three times to clarify this. I said, hey, the label says Waketa leather. And as far as I know, this is a vegetable tanned leather term. Is that right or are you guys using it in a different way? Three times they confirmed that that was 100% vegetable tanned leather. There was no chemicals involved and all that stuff.
But what I see here is, is really getting me confused. Um, I'm not sure if they, they're not aware of the term or they use it in a different way that I'm not aware of. So I'm, uh, I'm going to show you how the real Waketa vegetable tan leather burns here in a second. So we cut a few straps from this Waketa leather, the traditional natural undyed Waketa leather. And it just burns like wood. Let's burn the original Waketa leather and see, see the reaction. It burns like wood. It sometimes even you hear the crackles, like little cracking sounds of the item. Once they burn, they tend to stick together. This is how vegetable tan leather burns and responds to fire. The crumbles, the ash looks slightly different. They tend to stick together almost like charcoal. And the ash is black. It doesn't show green hues, green signs, which is the color of chromium that used in the chrome tanning. You can see the difference between this ash residue and this ash residue. And this is basically why I tend to do this ash test sometimes to get a little bit better understanding of the tanning involved in the leather. So this result makes me a little bit confused about the labeling they use over there. I think it may be a little bit of a misleading information there. A little over three square foot of leather in front of me. I think the total for the leather cost should be around $25 to cover it. And there's quite a bit of support materials involved in it and it's a medium, medium complexity construction. I give that part accessories, materials, and labor for $85 in total. A bag of this sort should be able to get done about $110 in total leather and labor cost. I paid $1,620 for this bag. Given my estimate of $110 for leather and labor cost, it's quite a bit of premium to pay. Of course, it's Louis Vuitton. The status and the prestige is what you're paying for here. Mostly, <clears throat> as long as you know, you're aware of that. Quick note on Louis Vuitton packaging. Definitely one of the best I've seen out of all the luxury shopping I've been doing for this purpose. Everything comes in layers and layers of packaging. Dust bag for your product. There is a perfect housing for your product's box in it. Um, it's one of the best and I would like to point that out. Leather wise, there's not much to enjoy here. It's leather, it's good leather, um, but it's covered with very heavy finish that is kind of getting in your way to sense and experience this leather piece. I think if you are looking for a bag like this that costs about $110 to make in leather and labor, without the status, you can find similar items on the market from $250 to $500 price point, depending on the business model, who doesn't pack status and prestige into their prices. But of course, high luxury brands are providing this service to customers and this is not about leather, this is about the prestige you're getting.